Hey everybody, Miss Faye here, and welcome to my world. Let's talk about these, this narcissist. I titled this video, He's Coming Back. I know if you were like me, I couldn't believe when he tried, when he came back. He <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this narcissist coming back and that and how he has the audacity to come back. All right, I'm going to tell you my tale with it. I was with my DL narcissist for five years we dated. Um, and the way we did, I, we saw each other every weekend, all weekend. That's what we did, you know. So um, he lived out of state for me. And um, one day he kind of, he started pressuring me about moving in. I, I really didn't want to do it, but I went along with it <clears throat> because I thought, you know, he was, he was nice to me most times in the whole five years. You know he showed his face. But it wasn't all of it. It was just bits and pieces of cruelty thrown here and there, you know, uh, against the nice things that he did. So you, you know, you just kind of go along with it because you feel like... Uh, all relationships have problems. Nothing is perfect. And so with that mentality, then you just accept it and try to heal it and keep going. <clears throat> so the six years when he moved in and when he got his last piece of luggage or whatever into my house, he flipped. He flipped. I mean... <clears throat> He had me to the point till I was walking on eggshells around in my own place. It was that bad. He always he was always angry all the time. And then he he wanted me to be with him because being a narcissist, he needed my energy to feel good. So now I realize why he dragged me to places that I really didn't want to go, especially stay with him all day long, but he needed the energy, you see? And through spirituality, that's how I uh, understand what was really going on. Now, in the six years, he tried to convince me to do a lot of things, especially with my finances and monies and all of that. Mm. I think his whole thing was that if he could just get me to submit to putting it all together or whatever, then he could really have power and control over me. And that's what, ladies, you need to be careful about that because the narcissist is all about power and control over you. And he wants to break you, break you in two. You see, break you in two. It's not that he just wants to take your energy that when he finally gets rid of you or whatever, that you're so drained, you're not worth anything. And uh, after I was uh, discarded, I was devastated, devastated because I had put so much work into the relationship. And even when he was being awful, just awful, I would uh, just depart to another space to give him time to settle in or settle down or whatever. You see, I just took a lot. I just bent over backwards trying to make the relationship work. Ladies, don't, don't make that mistake. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you understand? Just let the shit hit the fan. Don't do it. I, I, I mean, I even dumbed down. 
dumbed down to be able to be able to communicate with him. You see, because they have a way of making you feel like <clears throat> I, I think his comment, one comment he said to me, you act you act like you feel like you're better than everybody else. <laughs> And now I realize <clears throat> that was just manipulation, manipulation, because his job was to bring you, and is, to bring you down a few pegs. He wants to bring you down to the level to where, the he, where he feels comfortable. So if he's here and you are here, he's going to fight you to bring you down, probably lower than where he is so that he can keep keep on trying to destroy you that's right that's right and this particular person you know he already had a track record because um i think his last relationship he had heard a uh to buy a house for them to buy a house together of course, she already had a house, and <clears throat> from my understanding, her house did not sell as fast. He got into this house with her. Then he, his narcissist ways came out. She couldn't take it. Thank goodness she could go back to her house because her house didn't sell. But she got stuck with the bill for the new house. You see? Stuck with the bill for the new house. So, you know, in their intent to destroy you, be, you know, be aware that he's looking at your finances. He's looking at how much you make, how do you make it. He wants to find out as much about you as he can, because this way he can run his smear campaigns about you. You see, when you're out telling people what a wonderful person you have, he's telling his people what a terrible person you are. What a horrible person you are. That's just, that's just the spirit in him. It's evil. And once you can understand what you're dealing with, you can free yourself from torment because that's all he's got for you is pure torment. Uh, after I was discarded and, and went through the devastation and couldn't believe what was going on and all of that, and yeah, he, he left me with some debt. Yes, he did. I don't think he didn't. <laughs> but I didn't put my house online. I didn't put the house on the line, and the debt that I was left with, I could handle it myself. And that's a hint to you if you ever think about going into any kind of financial deal with another man, whether you, you know, whether you're married to him or not. I don't give much credence to the marriage thing anyway. So if you go into a financial deal with him, you need to make sure that you can handle the deal if he backs out of it. That you can handle it with your own finances if he backs out. That's the way I live my life. I don't do anything that I can't afford myself. I think this is very important for women to understand because a lot of women, when he takes off, you can't make it. You can't make it. You can't handle your bills. You can't pay your car note. <laughs> Some of you can't even buy groceries. You understand? Don't ever let yourself be in that predicament. I got my kitty down here that wants to get on camera, so that's why I'm shooing her away. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> The, uh, the narcissist is coming back. All he did 
Let's try to try to destroy you now. And he'll go away because the whole time he's with you, he's got a whole line of people that he's seeing while he's with you. You understand? So with him discarding you because whatever, maybe he feels like he can do better over here than putting all of his time in you. See, they have a main supply and then they have all these other supplies just hanging on. And they're usually past people that they have relationships with. They never really let them go. You see? And so now that he's discarded you, you are part of that pack that he would never let go of. You see? So if he ever decides that he wants to come back to you and, you know, maybe maybe he, he feels like you were the greatest supply he had and he, he'd like to come back to you, believe me, he's not letting those people go. He'll come back to you and love bomb you. You'll go back into the same cycle all over again. The love bombing, then the attitude comes, and then the, when the discards come, you'll be devastated and broke again. And, you know, come on. You fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. Don't let that happen to you. These people are damaged. They sold their souls to the devil. You can't do anything with them. You can't, you can't do anything with them. But get away from them. Get away from them. Because the evil entity in them and one of the um, watchers said uh, said the spiritual term of uh, the Jezebel spirit that's exactly what it is it's the Jezebel spirit and if you are into your Bible you've heard of it the Jezebel spirit is a very destructive a very destructive energy and because they have this energy and this energy has been with them a long time, a long time. They feel that that's them. They feel that, that, that that's, that's who they are. And they have been operating in that low vibration for so long. They don't know any different. They don't want to know any different. Their minds won't let them know any different. It's nothing inside. They, they don't have emotions the way that you have emotions you see a lot of times even if you uh, and they, they lie all the time about everything I guess you know like I said I was with a covert so I mean uh, you cannot I found that I couldn't trust him when it all came out and uh, it didn't really, I didn't face the truth until the discard. That's when I, well, I, I, I was forced to face the truth. And uh, <clears throat> I, like I said, I searched for answers and through spirituality, uh, I got the answers. And I'm telling you, he's coming back because mine has tried to come back several, several times. Several times he has tried to come back. You see? Because, why? Not because he cares about me. Not because he loves me and he wants to be with me. And No. Because I'm still standing. I'm still doing well for myself. I do not need him. He wants to come back to change that. You see? He wants to finish what he didn't the first time. Okay. And he only stayed with me a year, but I'm telling you, he did a job on me in that year. A job on me. It took me uh, several years, and I'm not, I'm serious. Several years to heal from the trauma I went through living with that narcissist. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? This is serious, ladies. And that spirit is everywhere. It's everywhere. You need to be so careful. And, uh, you know, 
one way to be careful is stop sleeping with everybody you meet. You need to be celibate for a while to clear your energy anyway. Be celibate for a year just to clear, just to clear out all the negative stuff, all the people that you've been, whatever. Take a year, clear yourself out. You see? And even if a fella comes along that you really like and everything, it's even better that you celebrate while you're with getting to know him. <clears throat> there was a song that came out. <clears throat> I, I remembered it the other day. It says something like, true love is, is between your legs and mine. That was a song. True love is between your legs and mine. That's the biggest crock of bullshit I've ever heard. It is not. Love is not between your legs or his legs. No, that's lust. And lust and love are two different things. You see? Lust is a low vibrational energy. And when I say low vibration, I'm the term I'm going to use so you'll understand evil. Lust. Lust. It's one of the, it's one of the, uh, the seven deadly sins, I think. Yeah. Lust. And people call that love. You know, when you feel the fluttering and the sweaty palms and you, you understand, they think that's love. That's lust. That is not love. And I'm telling you this because with the narcissist, they use all kind of manipulation on you, especially in the love bombing stage. That's where their, their objective is to hook you in. And then they slowly try to destroy you. It's a slow process. It's a slow process. You might not know that it's happening, but you don't feel good. You don't feel good like you used to. You know, you don't feel free that you can be yourself or say the things that you want to say and do the things you want to say. All of a sudden, you feel constricted. The process has begun. The process has begun. They want to break you down until you just mush. You just mush. Because remember... That narcissist, that especially a DL narcissist, hates you. He hates you. And to him, it makes sense because, because the, the demon has taken over them. It's not their brain. It's the demon that has control of them. You see? And the demon's objective is to destroy you. <clears throat> I'm hoping that that you understand because this will help you deal with these people in a different way, you see, and help you to see it coming and see it coming. If you, if you <clears throat> try to be in tune to your intuition, believe me, your intuition will tell you, it'll tell you from day one all the way to the end because mine was, mine was, Mine was when I first, when I, I think on our first meeting, my intuition was kicking in and, and shooting up red flags all over the goddamn place. <laughs> red flags. All, and, but, <laughs> my excuse for that was that I wasn't spiritual then and I didn't know any better. I'm just, you know, trying to, trying to meet someone nice someone that suits my taste you see and and try to work on it I was I was willing to put in the work to make it work and that was that was kind of a mistake because when you go into relationship he it let him put the work in to prove to you that he's worthy of being with you and that will cut a lot of narcissists right out the ball game because they're not going to do that. 
it's all about them, not you. Never you. Everything they do is for them. See? So now he wants to come back and he's love bombing you and and you know he's once he he'll find a way to test the waters to see if it's okay for him to approach. So whatever you used to do with him that you enjoy, he'll probably present you with that, you know, to entice you to go out with him again. And once you're out again, then, you know, the way he did me, already he had all these plans and what we were going to do and where we we're going to be and, and all this stuff. Not realizing that by, by the time he came back, I was healing. I wasn't all way healed, but I was healing. So I was still willing to listen to what he had because I'm still trying to figure out what is this all about? What is happening here? <clears throat> so he comes back and he makes all of these big highfalutin promises and everything. So I'm considering, I mean, you know, I, this is somebody that I was in love with. So I was considering giving him another chance, right? But he made one awful mistake. He checked me and tried to put me in my place before the deal was sealed. <laughs> so when that happened and my intuition said, no, no, I listened, I listened. So I sent him on his way. No, don't, don't bother me again. It's over. That's it. That's it. So what did he do? Went on with his whatever he does. He uh, probably had another main supply waiting in the wings anyway. You see, and all of the others. In fact, one time he told me, I, I just remember he told me, he said, Faye, I know a lot of people. And you would, you would think there's something so, you know, he got a lot of friends or he, you know what I mean? You would think that, but no, he knows a lot of supply. Men and women, remember, men and women supply. He knows a lot of people, so you are not his main supply. You may be his better supply. He may get more things out of you than he could send the other supply because the supplies give him different types of energy, okay? When he's with a man, he gets a different type of energy than when he's with a woman. And, what, and then he's got women for, you know, for financial reasons, you know, that, that to him that's supply too. So whatever his needs are, he's got to have a lot of people to supply him. Not, he's never enough. The demon is never enough, okay? So now, that he's come. That, that was that was the first time they just come back after the discard. Okay, around the holiday, holidays, his ass pop up again, trying to find another way to come in. You see, they never give up. This spirit, this spirit will not let them. They never give up. They want to finish you off. That's a mission. And the fact that there's so many of them out here, ladies, we are in danger, in danger. And he wasn't violent, but some of them are violent, you know, violent. And the women feel trapped in these situations for one reason or another. This is no good, ladies. You have to take your power back. I keep saying that. You have to take, you have power. And one big power that you have that you never even thought of is to close your goddamn legs. Close your legs. That doesn't cost you anything, but it will save your life. Close your legs. You see, the music industry, 
and society. It's all about opening your legs. You see? It's all about sex and sex and money and against the, you know, the whole thing. Don't you see that's low vibrational? That is not helping your soul to ascend at all. You walking around looking like a hooker all day, all night. But what? You're destroying your own self. Whatever you get out of that. Let me tell you something. Just because I know a lot of times you look at uh, people who seem to have it all. You know, the big house, the mansion, or the whatever. So, if these people have it all, why is their divorce rate so high? You see? Why, is, why some of them just die for no reason? I mean, all of these things happen to them. And then, you know, they'll come up and say what a miserable relationship they had. So you see, that doesn't mean anything. Don't, don't go after that. Don't go after what you see on the outside. Go to bring goodness to the inside. Goodness. And everybody knows goodness because your intuition will tell you that that's good. That's not. That's for your better good. That's not. You see, your intuition is always speaking to you. You know, you can shut it out and not listen. And when you run up on a on a, a narcissist, your intuition will tell you. Your intuition will definitely tell you. So, ladies, I've hope, I hope I I hope that I've said something in this video that will help you. Just remember, just because he hurt you so bad that, you know, you're never going to see him again. <laughs> if you still standing straight up, he will be back. He will be back to do it all over again. It will never change all over again. But you, he'll leave you in a worse situation than he left you the last time. That's the point. He'll leave you in a worse situation than he did the last time. So ladies, take care of yourself. And thank you so much for viewing this video. And I hope to see you next time.